Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a look at a very tricksy Pokemon V. It's Wobbuffet V! you got to kind of love Wobbuffet V, right? Wobbuffet has, has almost been in, like, Pokemon Purgatory for a little while. Didn't get a GX, didn't get a Tag Team GX. Um... It didn't get much, to be honest with you. It did get a break. We did get a weird promo Wobbuffet break, which I'm not entirely sure why, but okay, we got a Wobbuffet break. Outside of that, Wobbuffet just doesn't get the love. Wobbuffet never gets the chase cards. Except for Wobbuffet break, this is the first, like, chase card Wobbuffet we've ever had. So, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you enjoy it. Let's give Wobbuffet the love that he or she deserves. I'm joking, it's clearly a male Wobbuffet. It's one of the few Pokemon we can just look at the art and know for certain. But anyway, Wobbuffet then. We're getting a Wobbuffet V. Is it any good? I really like it. It's a very tricksy card and it's very fun, but it's probably easier if I just explain what it does. Though shout out at the beginning of the video to the lovely Joe from Cerebi.net. I did translate these using Google Translate, but then I, I checked with Joe because he's a lovely man. And by the time you listen to this, watch this, I'll probably also have checked with the lovely David Hockman, who is, of course, another one of our favorites. So 220 HP is high. It's right up there with stuff like Regirock V. So far, at least, 220 is the high end of Pokemon V. The retreat cost of V is kind of annoying because it's not low, but it's not high enough to use Pokemaniac or use buff padding to get yourselves a little bit of extra buffness. So, yeah. Anytime I see a, a retreat cost of three, I'm just like, why can't it just be a retreat cost of four? Like, seriously, just, just make it a retreat cost of four. We'll be fine. And we've got a weakness to darkness here because, well, it's a psychic Pokemon. And nowadays, psychic Pokemon have a weakness to darkness and a resistance to fighting. It's not like the old Wobbuffet. And to be fair, we've had a couple of really good Wobbuffet lately. The, well, it's not that recent, but the one that we had in Phantom Forces that turned off abilities. The one in Lost Thunder that essentially turned off Pokemon, well, Prism Star Pokemon. So, you know. Yeah, but we're used to them having a weakness to Psychic No Resistance. Remember, that has changed in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Cool. But it does mean you're still hitting weakness against those old Psychic Weak Pokemon, things like Mewtwo and Mew, for instance, which are pretty gosh darn good. And being a Psychic Pokemon means you get other advantages. Things like Spell Tag to, do, to drop extra damage when you get KO'd, which is quite nice. But the attacks then, well, the first attack for two colorless energy, swap all damage counters on this Pokemon with those on your opponent's active Pokemon. You just swap damage counters between Wobbuffet V and the defending Pokemon. And this isn't new. Like, this really isn't new. One of the... I, think, I feel confident saying, right? One of my least favorite Pokemon decks we have ever had. One of the ones that has annoyed me pretty much more than any others was that absolutely appalling Mewtwo EX with damage change. Which is exactly this. I mean, this is called Holdout Barbs, but it's the same, alright? It's exactly the same. The thing was, it wasn't actually Mewtwo that used this attack. Well, I mean, it was occasionally. Generally speaking, we'd use Mega Mewtwo, and we would use Shrine of Memories to allow us to copy our pre-evolutions attacks, and then you could use Mega Turbo to accelerate the energy you needed, given that it was too psychic and a colorless, and it wasn't the cheapest attack ever. But the point was that Mega Mewtwo would come in, and if you didn't one-hit KO, they just swap damage. Now, it only really kind of worked once, because you would hit them for, like, 200, and they wouldn't quite be KO'd, and then they would just use damage change to put 200 on you. Whereas, if you hit them for 200 again, damage change wouldn't do anything, because they'd swap their 200 for your 200, etc. But it's still kind of annoying. The thing was that Mega Mewtwo also had Psychic Infinity for two colorless energy, which did 10 damage plus 30 more times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So it would sit there smashing with Psychic Infinity. And then if you didn't one hit KO it, they would whack all the damage onto you. It's not the same with Wobbuffet. We'll get to the second attack in a minute, but a second attack doesn't quite do it. 
Of course, we also have this being very reminiscent of the GX attack of the first Alolan Ninetales, the water one. But it's not quite as good. You see, Ice Path GX moved all damage counters from Alolan Ninetales to your opponent's active Pokemon. Whereas Warbuffet's attack here switches damage. You don't just move your damage to the defending Pokemon. You also take all the damage that they had on them. It's not quite the same. But you've got 220 HP, which quite fantastically is actually 10 more than Mega Mewtwo had, despite the fact you're a basic V and they were a Mega Revolution. And you're going to survive a lot of hits. And when you survive those hits, you're going to be able to move the damage to your opponent. It's a really nice attack. And honestly, it's good as a blocker. If you just want a Pokemon to whack into the active to take a hit, Wobbuffet's your boy. We talked about more Pico. Yesterday, earlier today, depends on the upload schedule. And we said the more Pico does 150, and you discard an energy to it and switch to the bench. And then you want to stick something up to take a hit. Well, being able to switch up a Pokemon with 50 more HP that can then move all the damage to the defending Pokemon when hit is really nice. Now, the Retreat Cost of 3 is actually kind of super annoying because we just don't have a, a good way to retreat it. So, yeah. But in a hit and run deck, right, if we can find good enough ways to retreat it, it can still work. I mean, you can always, I mean, if you're playing Lightning Energy with more Pico, you could always use Zero or a GX. And then as soon as you get one random Lightning Energy on there, bearing in mind you could do that using Tapu Coco, then you could actually have free retreat. And then that would be fun. I do like the idea of using this in a hit and run deck to block and then move the damage over. It's kind of hilarious. And the other thing that must be pointed out here, we don't have double colorless energy. Which is generally what we would use for this attack. It's what we use for Alolan Ninetales. Mega Mewtwo was able to use Mega Turbo. Alolan Ninetales had double colorless. Wobbuffet doesn't. But do remember I just told you that this is going to work nicely in a lightning deck. So you've got Tapu Koko Prism Star, which turns it into a single energy attacker. Or it's colorless energy, so you can use Welder. Or it's psychic energy, so you can use Malamar. We don't have double colorless energy at the moment, but I think we do have enough options in terms of energy acceleration that we shouldn't be terribly upset here. Also worth pointing out, the second attack. The second attack here, two psychic energy, 70 damage. The defending Pokemon cannot retreat during your opponent's next turn. It's not great. It's not, it's not particularly great. I mean, two psychic energy, 70 damage is not really good enough. And like I've said, we got Malamar to accelerate the energy. It's not like we can't get the energy on there. It's just awkward. I don't really like it very much. Now, stopping your opponent retreating is pretty gosh darn good, although a lot of people are starting to play Mallow and Lana nowadays, which does mean that a lot of players have more switching options in their deck than they have had since Guzma and Ace Roller rotated out. Back when we had Guzma and Ace Roller, things like this just didn't really work. Nowadays, it's easier, but the rise of Mallow and Lana is going to hurt your strategy against a lot of people. But this does combo nicely with a first attack. You hit them for 70... They're stuck in the active, so they have no choice but to attack you, and then you can swap the damage counters. You'll still take the 70 you did to them, but hopefully they'll do more to you and not KO you. The reality is, right, when a player faces down against Wobbuffet, they're not going to go, oh, I can't retreat, better do 180 damage, because they're going to know that you can just swap it over. So they're not going to do that. Unless they've got reason to believe, looking at the board state, that you're going to do something other than swap damage counters next turn. But it's going to buy you time. It's going to make sure that your opponent is not just stuck in the active, but they're stuck in the active not attacking. There are certainly uses for the second attack. Like I say, the second attack is basically, look, I'm hitting you, you're stuck in the active, you can attack if you want. But honestly, I'm just going to move the damage over to you, so there's not really a huge amount of point. You're going to be worse off if you attack than if you don't attack. Okay. And that makes perfect sense. But really, it's the first attack here. And I do see this as a blocking Pokemon, especially in a hit-and-run deck. And it's not going to work for everything. If your opponent's able to get a one-hit KO on Wobbuffet for two prizes, oh my goodness, it's not going to work. 
But if your opponent cannot get a one-hit KO, using this as a blocker is pretty gosh darn great. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We should probably give this a score. Let's give it... Oh, I feel like I've got a lot of these, lady. But let's give it four Wossies. I think this is a kind of Pokemon that a lot of players are going to ignore. And then a bunch of players are going to come out and be like, boom, I've made this great deck with Wobbuffet V. I like it. I think it's fun. But I would be very interested to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassyplays, where you can check out a whole bunch of games like Keyforge and Final Fantasy that don't have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.